April 12, 2014, around 10 a.m. Police receive a disturbing phone call from a man at a home in the city of Pleasant Grove, Utah. Pleasant Grove is around 35 miles away from Salt Lake City and is home to around 38,000 people. The house in question is a fairly new-built three-bedroomed home on a quiet and unsuspecting street. The front garden is strewn with various bits and pieces and a single ornament hangs over the front door. Darren West had just been released from prison on a drugs-related charge and had gone back to his former house to sort the garage out and gather his belongings. He used to share the home with his now ex-wife, 39-year-old Megan Huntsman, and their three children, 11-year-old Sawyer, 17-year-old JC, and Darian, who had just turned 18. In 2005, Darren had pleaded guilty in federal court to two counts of possessing chemicals intended to be used in manufacturing methamphetamine. He was sentenced to nine years in prison, but he maintained his innocence the entire time. The house in question was owned by his parents. Megan had also ended up leaving the home in 2011, at Darren's parents' request, when they found out that she had been having an affair. Hers and Darren's daughters continued to live in the house with another relative taking care of them. Megan moved around for a while, spending time living with her mother in West Valley City, before moving in with her boyfriend Jimmy and Meadowwood Village Mobile Home Park. Megan's mother described her daughter as very quiet, someone that kept to herself. She said she always struggled with mental health issues, but never wanted to ask for help and rarely shared anything about her life, keeping secrets about a lot of things. Megan and Darren had met in high school and Megan would soon fall pregnant with their first child. She eventually moved out at the age of 18 and she and Darren got married before having their second daughter a little over a year later. Down the line, things started to spiral for Megan and Darren. They became addicted to methamphetamine and this completely consumed Megan's life for years. People that knew Megan said that the mother of two was suffering badly from depression, was losing jobs because of her addiction and the marriage between her and Darren was becoming violent because of the drugs. When she finally stopped using meth, she turned to alcohol, becoming heavily dependent on that instead. Her drinking became even worse when, in 2012, her father took his own life. As 2014 rolled around, Darren and Megan had long been split up and were now virtually estranged. Darren was back at the house with a few of the people to help him sort through his things. Whilst moving stuff out of the garage, he noticed a strong odour, something that smelled like chemicals emitting from one of the cardboard boxes. The box read, Baby Stuff, Megan's. It was tightly sealed with electrical tape. Once pulled off, he made a gruesome and horrifying discovery. He found the corpse of a baby wrapped up inside a plastic bag. The only person he could think of was Megan. He phoned her immediately and she made a shocking admission. She said that the baby was hers and Darren's and that she had given birth when he was in prison. The baby had been stillborn and out of fear and panic, she had wrapped it up and hidden it, scared about calling someone or going to a hospital. Darren was shaken and immediately phoned authorities. They received an order to conduct a thorough investigation of the house. Pleasant Grove police quickly arrived at the property and the home was swiftly taped off. As police were searching the garage, they found some bloody leather gloves too. Already a very disturbing scene, officers arrived at the mobile home park. Megan's boyfriend had just returned to find police cars surrounding his home, and officers said that they needed to take Megan in for questioning. One of her neighbours, a man named Mr Brady, recalled that upon hearing the police had found the baby's body, Megan had gone to him and begged him for a gun. Whilst at the station, Megan told police the same story that she had told Darren. The baby in the box was her child, and when she realised they had been a stillborn, she panicked and didn't know what else to do. But as the search of the property carried on, to the officer's horror and shock, they came face to face with so much more than anyone could have imagined. Darren West had just finished serving a nine-year prison sentence and was ready to start his new life with his three girls. The current owners of the home called the police on Saturday after finding a child's remains while clearing out their garage. Some family members of the residents were cleaning out the garage came across a suspicious package, had kind of a pungent were found order. in a home that had been owned by the same family for years. They were well known to the she neighbors. She was pregnant multiple times. The bodies of six other infants that appear to be 
full stage were located inside the... Discovering the remains of seven infants in the garage. Six more babies' bodies were found, wrapped up in either towels, shirts or plastic bags, and then placed inside various boxes. Captain Michael Roberts described the scene as emotionally draining and hugely upsetting to the investigators. One detective said, Some of the things officers saw in that garage, they can never unsee. The tiny bodies were sent to the medical examiner's office for testing, one of which was to determine the cause of death, and also determine a DNA match. Just days after the heartbreaking scene was discovered, an arrest was made that would leave the neighbourhood in disbelief. A woman in Utah has been arrested on suspicion of murder after police found the bodies of seven babies stuffed in separate cardboard boxes in her former home. Megan Huntsman was arrested and booked into the Utah County Jail on suspicion of six counts of murder on Sunday while the investigation continues. Megan Huntsman was charged with six counts of first-degree murder and was now on suicide watch in Utah County Jail a devastating secret that had been kept under wraps for what would turn out to be 18 years, was finally out in the open. All of the children found in the garage were confirmed to be Megan's. One of the babies had been a stillborn, but the other six had either been suffocated or strangled. There were five girls and two boys. They determined that her poor babies could have only been alive for a matter of minutes before they were killed. We are still investigating the motives to find out why this happened, how this could have happened, said Police Chief Mike Smith. In my opinion, no matter what we come up with or say, it's just not something that you can wrap your mind around, of how a mother could do something like this. When officers told Megan that they had found more than one baby, she appeared confused. Police say the Utah woman accused of killing six babies and hiding them along with a stillborn couldn't tell detectives exactly how many infants she had in her home. KSTU reports Megan Huntsman told detectives there were eight or nine babies in her home, but police said they found seven. Police said six of those infants died after Huntsman allegedly strangled them. KTVX notes... She later said she had just made a guess and wasn't actually sure how many they would find. The question everyone needed answers to was why. Megan eventually told detectives that she wanted to help her babies avoid the terrible life she would ultimately have given them. She said her life was too chaotic, consumed by drugs and alcohol, and coupled with her mental health issues. She said she knew she couldn't take care of them physically, emotionally or financially. I deprive my little babies of the opportunity of life, she said. I think my mind was just so out of it. All I was focused on was the next fix. Between the years of 1996 and 2006, Megan had fallen pregnant seven times, and police think she would have given birth alone and in secret in her home, and there were no records of her ever having been to a hospital. Apart from the baby that had been a stillborn, she had killed every other one she had, within minutes of them entering the world. She had often covered them in chemicals to conceal any smell of decomposition, wrapped them up in various things, and hidden them in the garage, before carrying on with her life. Megan and Darren had three children still living in the house and detectives needed to know why she had made the decision to kill her other babies. She told police it all began happening after she became addicted to methamphetamine. Her first two daughters were born before she began using the drug and, although she was pregnant with her third living daughter when she was heavily into her addiction, too many people were aware of the pregnancy, including Darren, so she had to go through with everything. After her daughter was born, she barely told anyone about her other pregnancies and those she did tell were later told by Megan that she had miscarried. She said she was selfish and ultimately spent over a decade choosing drugs over anything else. It appeared from everything that Megan had said, it was entirely of her own doing, and no other person played a part in it. She told police she had wanted to move the bodies out of the garage, but was unsure how to do so without being caught. Neighbours in the area said they were devastated and totally blindsided by Megan's arrest. I spoke with several neighbours on this street who say not only is it shocking, not only is it disturbing, but it's just very sad because they knew her very well. Quite frankly, I'm still in a state of shock. We were wondering what the heck is going on. Yeah, we were worried about her because we could see that she was not looking in good health. And... Um, we were worried about the children that lived there. 
with her, uh, her, her three daughters lived there. The hawkers say the answers only created more questions, like how Huntsman had allegedly hid seven different pregnancies from the tight-knit community. She always looked kind of slim. We, I mean, uh, to have this many babies full term, it's like, where were they? You didn't have any idea she was ever pregnant, and you had no idea she had a meth problem. No, absolutely not. She was she was very quiet and pretty much stayed to herself, stayed in the house. I saw her walking up the driveway a few times, but couldn't hardly ever get her to wave. Just just a very quiet person. You, you, I never would have ever thought she was on drugs and or pregnant. But the first two girls. Um, that she had, no one knew she was even pregnant until someone said, we need to go to the hospital, make it in the hospital having a baby. And that was the only thing I can ever think of. It's hard to imagine um, 10 pregnancies because she does have three daughters, uh, but 10 and never showing. No, I never would have, you know, I... I had talked to her before. I helped her mow her lawn a few times, helped her with the lawn more. I never had a clue. And that was the days that she would have um, you know, killed the babies. And I never even dreamed that she was on meth. The majority of people said that although they noticed her gaining and losing weight over the years, they had no idea she was pregnant. Darren's family issued a statement saying they were in a state of shock and confusion. We are mourning this tragic loss of life and we are trying to stay strong and help each other through this awful event. Despite Darren disputing the possibility of paternity due to the affair his ex-wife had been having, he was later confirmed to be the father of all seven babies. Darren told police he only had knowledge of a couple of pregnancies, but was told Megan had miscarried. He said the discovery had shocked him as much as anyone. Authorities said they didn't believe he was aware of the murders and was not deemed a person of interest at the time. In the end, there just turned out to be no evidence that would implicate him, officers said. When asked how he could not have known about any of this, the police captain Michael Roberts said, that's the million dollar question. Furthermore, no one had any idea of how Megan's grown children, who were still living in the house, did not notice their mother was pregnant either. On one occasion, Megan had actually given birth upstairs in the bathroom before killing the newborn and cleaning up all while members of her family were sat just downstairs. As hearings for Megan Huntsman began, she arrived at court with cuffs around her ankles and wrists, often looking straight at the floor as the legal team spoke. She was held on a $6 million bail, $1 million for each baby. Megan's legal team were keen for a speedy process. Yeah. It was actually 2012, sorry. Oh, okay, okay. All right. Do you otherwise have any money in the bank or any other investments or anything that would help you repay it? No. No, I don't. We're requesting a continuance of two weeks if possible. Yeah, we've spoken about uh, the idea that the state has some pretty serious accusations that they intend to bring. Um, I've spoken with her about the delay. Uh, two weeks, she's concerned that that's fairly long um, in the balance of interest. I think um, if the state is at all able to uh, file something sooner, we would prefer that. It was stated that Megan would not face the death penalty for the charges. This was because she was accused of killing her babies between 1996 and 2006, and this was before the law in Utah changed in 2007. This change in the law made murder a capital offence if a victim was younger than 14. Until this law passed, killing a child was not actually considered one of the factors that could make someone eligible for the death penalty. These were very cold, calculated killings, said Prosecutor Jeff Bowman. She was a woman who was remarkably unbelievably, incredibly indifferent and callous. Judge Darrell McDade was presiding, and he recalled that he was the judge who had signed the initial search warrant on the day that the baby's bodies were found. 
He said he had quietly hoped and prayed he wouldn't be the one assigned to deal with it in court. I really thought I'd seen it all until this case. It shocked me then, and it shocks me now, he said. She said that she would, she had the baby, she would hold it for a short time. She said that none of the babies were alive more than a minute or two. And then she said that she used her thumbs and she described what she would just show me like this. These were very coldly calculated killings. She was the Megan that I had always known. No one ever is this shy, timid girl was capable of this. The person I know is not the same girl that the media portrayed her to be. Megan agreed to enter a plea rather than go to trial. This was under an agreement that could reduce her minimum sentence to five years, but by taking this, it would leave fewer options for her to appeal down the line. Prosecutors were satisfied to allow this to go ahead, and said that it would have been hard to prove a case against her at trial if she hadn't cooperated with police. On the 12th of February 2015, Megan Huntsman pleaded guilty to all six counts of murder. The charges beyond a reasonable doubt for jury. Do you understand that? Count three murder, a first degree felony. What is your plea? Count four, murder, a first degree felony. What is your plea? Count five, murder, a first degree felony. What is your plea? Judge Daryl McDade lamented the facts of the Megan Huntsman case as he sentenced her for killing six of her babies. It was April of last year when Huntsman's estranged husband called police after opening a cardboard box in the family's garage in Pleasant Grove. Huntsman declined to speak in court except with a statement read by her attorney. Depression and alcohol took a hold of me the same way drugs did. I cannot give a reasonable answer why I was capable of such a sick and heinous crime. I held my secret for 18 years. As part of the plea deal, prosecutors had agreed to recommend that the five years to life in prison sentences run concurrent to one another, but Judge Daryl McDade was not satisfied by this and said that it would be inappropriate for the terms to run concurrently. Therefore, I do think that it's appropriate that three of the charges run consecutively in this matter and they can run concurrently with the other charges. Following this, the Utah Board of Pardons and Parole set Megan's parole hearing for April 2064. She will be 89 years old. Prosecutor Jeff Bowman said that even then, he doesn't think she will ever be released. My guess is that she'll serve the rest of her life, he said. She used her own hands to strangle and smother six of her babies. And it's hard to imagine anything more heinous than that. It's been horrible for our department, and some of the things that officers saw in that garage they can't unsee and it was very very emotionally tough on many of our officers in court her three daughters read statements and stood by their mother saying she had always been the best mom to them no matter what anyone thinks you are you are a good person one said another read this is not the mom i know the mom i know was the one who had dinner for us every night a clean house and was a loving mother Nobody could guess my mom would do anything like this. Megan's sister and mother also showed their defense of Megan. Megan is not a monster, her sister told the judge. She's not evil. From what I understand, she was scared. The crimes of Megan Huntsman left the neighborhood shattered and family and friends utterly devastated. It is simply an unfathomable series of events that cannot be made sense of and it is something that will haunt many people for a long time to come.